This is the Healy Brothers Show. So thank, thanks again. Obviously, always uh, you know good to catch up with you and good to connect and, and hear what's going on in your world. You guys, have, as an organization, have had a lot of change. You've had new stores opening, service departments. There's a lot going on in in the Healy world. What's been the process? Like process is key, but change can also be something that is challenging. And when you talk about employee change, like talk to us a little bit about how you guys have approached that and how it's worked as successfully as it has. So like, just with anything like adding stores or, or, or adding new facilities that, that you need to grow into. It's, it's a huge process, but it all comes down to our people. Our people are phenomenal. I, we can't do it without them. We have great GMs. They train great people and it really makes it easier for us. Our job is to really just facilitate it, make sure it gets done properly and give them, give them the tools to do it. So going into Hyundai, I mean, we were able to move that facility in less than 24 hours. Granted, it's down the street, but we are operational. We closed down for one day and operational the next. Fully, like full-fledged, 70, 70 service appointments, sales appointments, complete mayhem. But we were able to do it because we had such a great team. Um, and I'd say that's like the biggest part. Like we have, we have great leadership, great people that are willing to come in after hours, come in at Sunday to set up their desk on their day off to make sure they are ready for the next day because they're just dedicated. So people is, I would say, number one to us. It's uh, it's how we survive. It's how we thrive. So well, that speaks so that's, that's so highly of your more. culture. Yeah, I mean, we think we have a pretty good culture. It's it's really all about family. I know that's cliche for a lot of dealers. They say all oh, of our family run, but that's really it's one of our core values here. And uh, we really try to make everyone, the customer, our people. We, we want to know about your day. We want to know when you're sick and not feeling well. We want to know how your, how your wife is, how your grandmother's doing. That's just how we are. Um, that's what we were taught as from my grandfather. And so that's, that's how we operate today. I love that. So one of the things, you know, that comes up in conversations when, when you're talking about consumers nowadays and marketing is this kind of like uh, online to offline. Meaning oftentimes the conversation or the search or the research will start online in some digital format. And ultimately, a lot of the things that you were just talking about are the offline side of things. Your great employees in the dealership, the experience that a customer receives when they walk into a Healy Brothers dealership. You know, it, it, as you're thinking about that, your kind of commitment in digital is huge. How do you match the customer experience as you take somebody from that online experience to offline? I mean, so it's it's definitely not easy, but you have to you have to be able to to adapt and adjust in the times. And I think that's one thing we we're training people, whether it's just handling a, a phone call a certain way or letting the person, hey, talk them through the calculator online. Like you have to be able to do both and you can't be scared to say, oh no, you have to come in to get pricing or you have to come in to get to get uh, something done. You have to let the consumer feel comfortable where they are. And they usually, they tend to do more when you, when you let them feel that way. Um, I mean, we have great, our BDC staff here is phenomenal. There were actually just going through a process of really updating the way they handle people, get more, I wouldn't say trendier, but be more of a human being and, and less scripted kind of follow like a, I'd say a document and be more like how me and you would be talking now and just follow something to get the person to feel comfortable using the online tools and use it and coming in. But it's, it's also when you're using digital too, we want to tell that story of what it's like. Hey, it doesn't matter where you shop, whether you come to our store, we have great people, but we have the, we have the tools online. We show you what we could do out here and, and engage with us that way. So it's, I don't have a preference. I guess you could say it in store or online. I'd love you to come to our beautiful facilities. We, we invest in them. We invest in our people and it's, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal experience. But if you don't, if you want to go online and shop and talk to us and chat with us, and go on our Facebook or, or whatever it is to interact with us. We're there to help you. And we're going to do it on your terms when it comes to your shopping. You had an episode of your podcast that I was listening to <laughs> recently where you were specifically- you don't, have, you don't have to toot my horn there, Molly. <laughs> were, you the only, were you the only listener that day? Uh, well, it was a replay. So, you know, I'll, I'll, call, I'll call myself out there. But uh, you had this episode, we were specifically talking about your website and you said, had a quote where I, I really picked this out because it spoke 
out a lot to this process, you said even though the customer comes into the dealership, you still have to have a high end customer experience online. And I think as you know, you were just talking about you're updating your storage, you're growing in so many different directions. I really loved how you were focusing in on matching both the, the digital side of your business to the in-person experience and making sure that the customer satisfaction is high on both sides. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, our website, we're going through another overhaul of our website. It's, it's always adapting. Um, I'm not the happiest with some of our, how our websites work, but granted it's some OEM, some us, but it's, it's really, it's really so, so important. And, and for the dealers that force people to all, oh, you need to come in line and not showing what they do and how they interact with people digitally, they're just, I don't think they're going to be there five to 10 years. I, I just think it's the way the consumer engages with you and understands what you do as a business. Um, and what you just as small as like what you do for the community that matters to people. Like when I go to a restaurant, I, I always use this when I go to a restaurant, I always search them. I always search them on social media, see what they're like, see their like, I love, I love the ones where the chef's out there cooking and, and talking about the meal. And he's got like <laughs> those short videos. Those are the best, like that's interacting. That guy wants to be, wants that restaurant to succeed. Like, I, I really think the consumer, when they come in or they've done business for the first time, they're going to do some homework on you. They want to see some reviews. They want to see how you interact. They want to see what you do for the community. They want to see who your people are. They want to put a face when they walk in like, oh man, that guy actually works at a store. He's not just hired from somewhere or somewhere they took someone. Like, I think that really, really me means uh, something to the consumer. And I mean, it means means more than I than I know, than I ever knew in the past, but it's that interaction consumers still want that they really they really do one thing to that point you know your comment about the restaurant where you have the chef out front it, you know that's humanizing right you see the chef you know who he is exactly. he's obviously passionate he has pride of ownership and and you guys have done a really good job of taking your team and allowing them to showcase some of what they do behind the scenes to make that experience to to cook the meal so to speak and exactly. and you guys have humanized them. You've really been Not very motivated. Not the easiest way to get those guys to do that. They're sometimes <laughs> they're a pain. no. It's it, yeah. it it's totally not. Well, it's it, it it can be a pain. It can be challenging. And it, for some people, it's just you know they're uncomfortable. But we know that consumers want that experience. Like you mentioned, hey, you're going to go search something on social media. You're going to look for reviews you guys have been motivated to go to this kind of full digital, you know, bio, if you will, you guys have a, a podcast now. What, what, what beyond what we just talked about has kind of leaned you into this like full digital opportunity. So, I, I mean, the, the podcast was started, well, one of the, one of the young guys came up to me and obviously I wasn't on camera a ton, but I get on camera. I'm not the best, but there's some people in our company that you would think they're, they're movie stars the way they could talk on camera. For instance, like Laura, she gets on the camera. She doesn't even practice anything. It makes me feel horrible about the way I perform. <laughs> uh, but so the way we went that way is we kept seeing all this short form content that people were using from podcasts to use as an ad or some of the stuff we even give to Alex that she uses some clips to, to use an ad to tell a story. I always talk about t always telling a story, but that's why we really got into it. It wasn't a podcast just to sit there and all of us chat about certain topics that can help consumer. Yeah, that's a big part of it. But it was also to take these little bits of it, get people engaged and feel comfortable of getting on camera and show the personality of the dealership. So we just did one other day. I think we just released it with our finance managers talking about first time buyers. He never gets on the camera. He's always shy, but he was able to sit down with us three, chat about it. We're on camera. And he, the guy spoke like he was, he's done it multiple times. So I think it's more of a comfort thing to sit down with other people, talk about things that we can help the consumer, talk about the life of the dealership, talk about how we do business, what we think about the community and all those things. And it was just a, it was a process to be able to sit down with them and get them on camera. But like you said, humanize us as a, as a whole, because we're not just a, a business that just tries to sell cars and make money. That's just not who we are. Uh, so I think that was, that was a huge part of it to really just get everyone involved and, and, and humanize it and, and get that other content to show us what we're about. Well, I love that you're really leaning in, <clears throat> excuse me, to to digital to to show this culture and behind the brand and behind the scenes and and show who these different people are. Because even as I'm watching them, I, I'm not in your area, so I'm not going to, you know, walk in, but I'm starting to get to know who is your team 
And uh, it's funny that you mentioned Alex on our team. And I was just talking to her in preparation for this call. And she shared with me some really interesting strategies that you have launched together that um, are we're helping to back with your ad campaign, specifically like your quick qualify program and the prepaid maintenance from your website. And, you know, not only these are like not your traditional inventory ad or use case for social media advertising, but just like you were saying, like using these short clips to brand yourself and how it's really fun as your social media advertising vendor to put some extra muscle behind that to, you know, get that word out and spread that branding and that humanization. Yeah, I mean, so that's probably the biggest reason we chose you guys. You guys kind of like, we we give you guys an idea and you guys just let us run with it. There's no like, hey, this is how we have to do it. This is how it's, it's scripted. We kind of give you something, you guys create something, you send it back and we'll send it back with with tweaks. Um, but yeah, we've been trying new things. We have a, we have a couple of new tools that, that have been working really, really well. And it helps the consumer kind of understand with, with what's going on with the with rates and all that stuff in the crazy world we're living in with uh, car payments. This tool, this this ad we created, we purchased this tool and it just in 30 seconds gives you, a, gives your, we call it the buying power. Let you know where you stand, what you can afford, where your credit is. And it doesn't, af doesn't affect your credit, does not do anything. It doesn't, uh, doesn't cost you anything, no social security number. It's, it's not invasive. Um, it's, really easy to use. And it just lets, let, gives the consumer like a, Hey, this is where I'm at today right now in life. And Healy can help me get, get here and get this done. And that's how we approach those. And our, our general managers really loved it. Um, and the ad looks great. We're sending great traffic. I, I think we've got about 20 chats in about a week and we just wanted to be innovative and, and interact with the consumer kind of just helping them. And they don't have to buy a car. We just want to be there to interact and see where they're at and, and let them know, be like, Hey, we have to wait. We have to wait a little bit for you to get a car. We're not going to try to force them into something. Um, but that's that's really worked well. I um, mean, then some updates. We now sell certain things online, like our online prepaid maintenance, was, which is like Healy branded. So that's another thing that we're still in the process of going back and forth and building it properly. I think we just finally launched it like yesterday or so. We finally got it all right. But that, that's the best part about, about what you guys do for us. Um, there's nothing that's shot down. There's nothing like, hey, and we also we get our honest, the honest opinion back. Like, hey, I, I'm not sure that's that's the one that's too aggressive. Um but it's just, it's open-ended. There's no stop. I mean, previous people would just be like, no, we can only do this. This is our, only our, our standard here. And this is, or not our standard. This is, we only have, uh, what's it called? Like certain, um, certain ads we can run here. And so there's like, sure. there's no, uh, there's no stop there with you guys. Well, I think Jake goes both ways, right? I mean, uh, listen, I, I called you yesterday. There's I told no you still no that ideas, right? You're not going to go call the next dealer. <laughs> no, of course okay. not. But but it but it goes both ways. I I called you yesterday. My my son who is about to get his license works very hard. He wants a new vehicle. So I called you as as a client, as a friend, somebody who I've known like, "Hey man, what's your opinion on this vehicle?" But I got to be honest with you, using the tool that you referenced on on your website to calculate payment was helpful for him, right? He's going to be 17 whether you're 17 or, you know, 65. 75 who cares however old you are having the tools to help you determine affordability what is this car actually going to cost me that's that's key like that's very helpful when it comes to educating yeah i mean a lot of the chats we get too like when we with customers like if you don't have these tools you still have the people like oh i don't believe i don't believe this calculator tool meanwhile it's, it's doing the math for you um obviously it's not adding like negotiation or discount like that you're doing the, like but it's it's calculating the math properly as long as you put the right zip code and all that stuff in. And, and our people here, like whether you're chatting, like, hey, let, let me help you with the tool. Let me make sure you have everything put in right and give you give you an area. But it, it just gives the, the person a peace of mind now. And they can be okay with with playing with it. And then they can still negotiate. We're willing to still negotiate with you. There's there's no issue. It's it's a car. It's it's a very big purchase. Um, but you have these tools at your at your house. So when you come into dealership, you can know where you're at, you can know where your credit is, you can know. Where the value, like the where, where the value of your car is in about two seconds, everything's right at your fingertips, and it's uh it's so much easier to do. It's also like you said, it's a better experience to the consumer instead of trying to hide everything. Like I went on a, I won't say who I went on a dealer's website today, and they have they asked for all your information before you can even look at a payment. Like that's what is that ten years ago? Um, right. and it's just that's like sad to me. I, I hate the lead gates. Like you should be able to a consumer should be able to move freely on your website at all times. And do what they want, do what they please, and find what they need in seconds. Not having seven million CTAs, and sometimes my managers they'll sneak behind, they'll add a CTA, and I'm just like, guys, like 
you're not, you have four here. The consumer doesn't even know what to do. They don't know which one to click. <laughs> They're just not going to click anything. Like you want them to feel confident and safe and, and just know like, oh, this is the best, best route for me to go down. They don't want too many choices when it comes to that kind of stuff and interacting with the car. Yes, cars, they want choices, but when it comes to all that stuff, it's just not necessary. Well, I mean, you mentioned, you know, a car is a big purchase. It's also an emotional purchase, right? Some people are excited. Some people are scared. Some people don't know how to feel. And, and you know, having having comfort in knowing that you're working with a retailer that you can trust, knowing that you're working with a retailer that has your, you know, best interest in mind and that, you know, you are going to stand behind them and you want it to be a comfortable experience. Like, that's that's huge. That's like super powerful. I'm I'm gonna ask you a question, you Jack. Rep- you want them to have a good reputation. You want to know what they do and stuff like that. So that's of of course. So so here's my question. If you were to share, and I know you said, hey, don't share, you know, my ads with other dealers, which, no, I'm kidding. which of that we you won't. Don't, don't share it to the people in my backyard. What? They already take they already take what? this stuff anyway. So <laughs> well, what, what's the saying? Uh, uh, copying is the highest form yeah. of flattery or just imitation mm-hmm. is the highest form of flattery. If if you were to talk to a dealer out there, right? And they were saying, hey, you guys, Healy, have done an amazing job of building digital reputation, you know, promoting your brand. What recommended or what recommendation would you have for a dealer that is is trying to figure out where to go next? So first off, just start. I, I mean, I, I hear from all these guys all the time. I read about it. You just have to start creating content. You have to create about your brand. That's You have to bring the attention to your brand and what you're about. That's like the number one most important thing. And the more I read about it, that's why the more I get involved in it. Uh, it's I, I would, my biggest advice before, before paid anything, paid comes and it's very important. You could show your ads and stuff like that, but you just don't want to shove product down consumers, consumers faces. You have to you have to create an image, create a brand and create a culture and show it to everyone online. And th- that doesn't mean go and blast it on there and show it to say for us, it'd be like making sure it goes to New York City. Use the create location. The, the correct locations, the correct, the correct hashtags to do locally. Like when I had the conversation with our, with our team, I was like, guys, there's no point to put hashtag New York city on a photo. I hate to tell you that that's really not our core business. Yes. We sell cars there, but our core business is du- Dutchess, Orange County, and the local counties around. Like I want to sell to my, my neighbor. So that's like the biggest thing I could, I could say is create authentic content with, with your team, with yourself, put a culture behind it, put a brand and bring attention organically to, to your dealership. And then from love- there, you do the paid and you mix that in. Like we always talk, obviously the Omni channel, but we always talk about when, when we advertise, we just don't want to send product. We show the service. We show what we're talking about. We show our reviews. Then we bring the person back around. We show them some product and we show, yeah, it's, it's good for moms and how it helps moms. That's like the whole point of it. And it all comes from content about your store, telling a story, and, but that's the first thing you got to do is, is just start digitally. And if you're not doing it, I, I literally just said this on a podcast yesterday. If you're not doing it, you're going to, you're going to die or, and fail. You have to do it. I love the emphasis on authenticity. Um, Meta actually ho- hosted a training yesterday and they were teaching about, you know, how their algorithm works right now and <clears throat> how to really get your videos out there specifically with reels. And the focus isn't on reach and the biggest audience anymore. What they really want to see is that you're creating content for those in your backyard or those who have the most engagement with you. And that can be a smaller um, audience. But as long as the content that you're producing is authentic and that the people who are closest to your brand are engaging with it frequently, like more so shares rather than, you know, likes or anything of that nature, that's when you're really going to start to blow up and get yeah. the views that you're looking like when for. you're having a conversation with the local pizzeria down the street, like that's something engaging. Like, like I, I tell like the team, they're, they're, they're young guys and girls. So they always like get starstruck about the likes when they, cause when they, on the side, they take pictures of cars, <laughs> people's nice cars and they, they go for it all. I was like, guys, I'd rather have five likes from local people say I just use Goshen for example, then a thousand likes and 800 of them are from, are from New York city. It, it's just the engagement's authentic. It's real. It's, it's people that do business and know about you. They understand your brand and what you're about. And I, I really got that home to them. Like, cause they're all about like on TikTok at the beginning, they're like, Oh, it's grow, grow, grow. I was like, guys, do you really care about, about what some guy in Idaho says, says about our car? 
Like it, it doesn't matter that stuff. So that authenticity, the local, the local feel, I think that's great. And if you could share that, if that's uh, something that you could share from Meta, that'd be great. So I could, I could really hammer it home with the, with the team. Cause yeah, sometimes, sure, sometimes man. they think I'm making it up. I'm well, and, some, and, and let's face it, sometimes maybe you are, but yeah, who knows? I'm just hammering it home here. I know where the cars get sold, so. That, that you do. So um, kind of in, in closing, we're just about a quarter through 2024. Any, any big goals, any big priorities for the Healy organization across the second half? Well, second quarters of 24. So, I mean, right now we're focused on what we have. Um, we did a, a lot of building over the last year. We built a 50,000 square foot Hyundai facility. We're adding service facilities. We're in the process of building, like adding onto our truck center. So our big focus, I would say for 2024 is focus on what we have, be more efficient, get more detailed, make sure we're sticking to the basics. Cause we don't know what next month brings and, and do and help our people train our people to the fullest. So we can take advantage of what we had uh, over the last couple of years. It, it seemed, I wouldn't say easy, but it was kind of, it was, there was no, there was tons of demand and, and little products. So it was just going through. So we're just really just focusing on what we have, the training in everyone, making sure everyone's up to par, getting back, to, like I said, back to the basics, really hammering it down, helping our consumer base that we already have. We don't have to go crazy and find people all over the place. But I would say that's, that's really what we're focused on is, is stay here and, and grow our service departments too. I mean, we have, we built a massive, massive, service facility. I mean, it's, we could take a hundred appointments a day if we wanted to. It's got like 30 bays. Um, we're taking up to 65 now. So it's, it's, it's a lot of work. So th those are our focuses and is, is make sure we take everything we have and bring it to the absolute max before we think about anything else. I love it. Well, Jay, it was great uh, to have the opportunity to catch up with you this afternoon. Molly and I both appreciate you uh, spending some time with chatting with us and uh, we will definitely speak soon. As always, as always, guys, I appreciate it. Thanks, Jay. All right, see you later. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, hit that subscribe button, and follow us at Healy Brothers on all social platforms.